Welcome to Songwriter Spotlight. We are coming to you this evening from the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee. Home of the West Tennessee Music Museum, Bluesman Sleepy John Estes Home, and the Tina Turner Museum. My name is Sonia and I'm your host for the evening. Thank you for being here with us. Now, help me welcome to the spotlight, Alexis J. Alexis, thank you for being here. We're excited to have you on the spotlight and I can't wait to learn more about you and your songwriting. First, tell us where you're from. I'm from a small town of Rosemark, Tennessee. It's right there, at, it's about 30 minutes from here. Um, right there at the line of Shelby in Tipton County. I um, lived there my whole life, graduated from Tipton Rosemark Academy, um, 22 years old. And uh, yeah, it's a cute little small town I love. It. It's got a lot of culture and music there too, so. Well, you told your age, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play off on that. You're 22, so what made you want to start writing your own music? How did you get started in music? Well, my grandmother used to sit on the porch with me um, and sing to me all the time. And, and from a young age, I always had music in the house, music in the family, in the home. Um, and my mom put me into um, a thing called Sunshine Generation back in Bartlett um, in my hometown. And um, I would sing and she'd get up there and sing with me. And I, as I got older, it was something I kind of stuck with. I tried other things like dance and gymnastics. It just wasn't <laughs> what I wanted to do. Um, so I stuck with that. And then in middle school, I did my first talent show and got up there and sang by myself um, with karaoke tracks. I didn't know how to play an instrument. Um, and then get into high school, I did choir and stuff like that. I went to um, all West and all state and all nationals. And when I decided to go to college, I figured, you know, why not do music? So I um, went to school for music. I graduated in December um, with a music business and a commercial music performance degree. And, um, you know, COVID happened and I didn't have anything to do for the longest time. You know, I was tired of watching Netflix. So I went to Guitar Center and I bought a guitar. This is about a year and a half, two years ago, and decided to teach myself how to play guitar. So I've been writing since I was little, but I didn't start playing guitar until about a year ago, two years ago. Tell me a little bit more about your degree. I graduated high school in 2018, so I started fall of 2018 at University of Memphis. And I started out with a commercial music vocal performance degree, which is a newer degree, but it's focused on kind of like commercial stuff like this, you know, writing and performing and recording and stuff like that. And um, I was ahead because I took some credits at Rosemark that were college credits that transferred. And I figured why not go ahead and add something else. So the music business degree was something I was interested in in order to kind of familiarize myself with the business. So as you, you know, especially being an independent artist or a songwriter, you want to have the information. So I decided to add that. So I'm a double major in that. So with that, you get, um, it's a lot of the same things like the recording and, and stuff like that, but then you get the business part of it. I'm actually on the label. It's called Blue Tom. It's a record label through the school. Um, and you get to release music through them and have like a real life experience in the commercial world of music instead of just jumping into it and not really knowing. So it's, it's a really, really cool program. So is your goal to be a performer or to be a music producer? That's a hard question. <laughs> Cause I mean, I never thought that I would have a business and I was like, I'm not going to do anything with music. I'm just going to perform. Um, right now I, I perform a lot. That's, that's what I do. And, um, I have some music coming out and, but I write all my own music. So I would say in a way that I still want to stick to that, you know, and I think it would be fun to co-write with people and write music for other people too because it's a whole different aspect but I definitely want to keep songwriting and performing at the forefront um i think it would be really neat to work with some people on some other projects and kind of mentor or like be producer you know and kind of help with stuff like that but also like the event planning part too and scheduling and booking events and stuff like that so kind of all of it encompassed together so it's hard to pick one but from when i started i've wanted to, to be a performer when you're writing your music, what inspires you the most? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a little bit of everything. Um, a lot of the songs that I have now are actually about people that I have either dated before or I was friends with before. Um, and you know, you go through the motions and stuff happens and you have fallen out and sometimes you get back together or you have a friendship or whatever. But I think um, a lot of like, life events revolving around just any type of relationship, whether it's family, friend, you know, significant other, stuff like that. So very um, like human experience stuff, I guess, stuff like that. So tell me the story 
behind the first song that you're going to play for us this evening? First song is Motel 6, yes, actually. <laughs> um, so I did a, um, like I said, I'm from like 30 minutes outside of Memphis. So, and I go to University of Memphis, so a lot of the stuff I do is around that area. And um, Crosstown Concourse, which is the old Sears building, um, they revamped it. They have apartments and um, art things and stuff there. They have a radio station, and I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. Um, but they had me on to do a radio show, and it went live on the radio, and I had some friends and family listening. Well, one of the songs um, is called Motel 6, that's the first one I'm going to perform, is about um, a guy that I dated for a while, and we were really close. And his mom follows me on Facebook. Well, they posted it on there and, and she commented. And when I played that song, she just somehow knew that that song was about her son. And she commented and she's like, everything was good, but I really, really like Motel 6. So um, it was just something kind of funny, lighthearted, you know, that I have to think the whole thing is that a lot of times you write music where you talk about things and you don't think that people are gonna know it's about them, but a lot of the times they're going to, you know, and that could go both ways. It could be really good or it could be really bad. So that's another little quirky thing about songwriting too, is just kind of being vague, but also being specific. But in reaction to that, I sat down one day and I just kind of had this, these thoughts going and I was strumming along, just messing with the words. I was like, I wrote this song because your mother knew the other one was about you. And I was like, I kind of like this. So actually the song I'm gonna play after that is called Ghost of the Past. And it's a reaction to her figuring out that song was about him. So, and I think on top of this, the whole time he had no idea. He doesn't use Facebook or anything. So it was just kind of a thing back and forth, but um, there's huge supporters of me and my music and everything, but it was just kind of one of those things, like I said, it just happened and it was super random. And I was like, this doesn't happen every day. So, you know. Well, let's see. We'll start with Motel 6.
So the Motel 6 reference is leaving the light Yes, on. you're the first person to just get that without me having to explain the story, which is funny because I remember being little, we used to travel a lot, and you'd always hear the commercials about, you know, we'll leave the light on for you. And that was one of the, I just, that's something that stuck in my brain. And actually, um, the whole story behind the name obviously was just a reference, but I was in uh, one of my voice lessons with my professor, and I played this for her. And she's like, that's really pretty. I like it. What's the name? And... The thing is for me, like my whole life, if I've ever written essays or papers or stories or whatever, the title is the hardest part for me because I mean, it's the first thing. It's like the cover of a book, you know? So to me, it has to be concise, sometimes quirky, not super on the nose, but give you some information on what's going on. So um, we were kind of talking about specific parts that are repeated or that are important. And she was like, you say you leave the light on a lot. And I was like, yeah, isn't there a commercial? There was, I was like, it's not Super 8. I was like, what is it? She's like, it's Motel 6. And I was like, that's it. That's what I want to name it because it's it's different. People will be like, "What is you know?" If you see it like on Spotify, Apple Music, you're like, "What is this?" So um, I just really liked it. It was different. So and it's not. It doesn't tell you really what's going on, but you can kind of think about it. Like you said, you're like, "Leave the light on." So what is she talking about? So if you've been playing the guitar for a year and a half, did you teach yourself or did you actually take lessons? So I took lessons when I was like probably eight, nine, ten, and I remember going to the pawn shop and picking up this just super cheap guitar because I knew I was going to bang it around. It's got scratches and scrapes and everything on it because I had it as a kid. And I took him for a couple weeks and I just could not stick with it. It was one of those things that just didn't didn't work for me. Super nice guy, very talented, but I just kind of stopped doing it. Um, and when I got older and started singing in high school and stuff, my voice teacher would say, you need to learn how to play an instrument. She said, not, I mean, you do fine just singing, but she was like, if you can accompany yourself, you'll do gigs and stuff like that. That way you don't have to rely on other people because, you know, it's hard to get other people to play sometimes, schedules, stuff like that, and money. I mean, if you're gigging, you know, it's just you. So, um, like I said, uh, when COVID came up, I, I went and got it and I had all the time in the world to do nothing. So I got the guitar and um, I listened to songs that I already knew. A couple of them are super simple chords and then I've watched YouTube a little bit, but I just kind of sat and trial and error over and over again I get super frustrated sometimes and put it and I'm like I'm never gonna play this again and then now I find myself every day when I come home I'm just I'm feeling weird happy sad whatever I just sit down and play for a little while so it just became a habit well that leads me to my next question which mm -hmm. is do you make it a habit of writing every day I try to um that's one thing I am a perfectionist so it's <laughs> I really I don't think I've ever started a song and left it and came back and finished it. So all the ones that I have so far that I would play, because I have a book full of some that I'm like, I don't know if I ever want to see the light of day, but the ones that I play in a gig, I sat down and I would say maybe in like a moment of frustration, like I would just sit, sit down and write it in about five minutes. It's just, it's either gonna be good or it's gonna be bad, but I just try to make myself do it all the way. But um, it's very hard for me to start something, like I said, and, and finish it. So I try to, I'll have things in my notes. Oh my gosh, I could scroll on my notes app on my phone forever and see all kinds of little snippets or an idea. But I, I try to make it a habit um, because I think, just like I said about, you know, it's all about relationships and human encounters and stuff. And I think there's things that happen every day that you could make into a song. You know, so I'm trying to get in the habit of not only writing every day, but trying to go back to those things that I didn't finish because I'm, maybe I feel different about it or I have a different perspective on it. But um, to answer your question, yeah, I, I try to. Now, sometimes I just come home and I don't want anything to do with music because I go to school for it, I work for it, and I'm like, I just want to sit down and watch TV. <laughs> but um, yeah, I find myself writing every day. In your studies, was mm -hmm. there classes on songwriting as well? Yes, we actually had, um, so, one of the songs I'm going to play is called Heartstrings. It's the first song that I ever wrote and played guitar with for myself in, high, in college. Excuse me. Um, we were in a class called Intro to Music Business, um, and this is a class that every music major has to take. And there's a guy that works in the music business in Memphis. Um, he's been in Nashville and stuff like that. So he teaches the class, and the final project was you um, are put with a group of people. Mine ended up being all females, which I thought was really cool. We could have a cool perspective on it. Um, we write a song, perform it, and record it. And so I came with this idea, I had these, these words, and at the time I didn't play an instrument. Um, and my friend Sarah, she plays guitar, bass, keys. So she kind of sat at the piano and came up with something. So we submitted it, and it was one of those things where, um, kind of like a pass or fail, so somebody gets an A, somebody gets a B, somebody gets a C, whatever, so the groups. Um, so we tied for first, and our song won. So Heartstrings is the one. 
Um, so that was one class. And then we actually did have a songwriting class where he would put us through exercises. We'd write poetry or we'd find something like a current event and try to write about it. So it's, it's really neat the way that they kind of, because it's hard to make a class or a curriculum around something like that because it's so artistic and everybody does it differently. But it's really interesting to work with other people and see how they write too and kind of put it together. Well, I'm interested to hear your response to yeah. Motel 6. Yeah. Your companions. <laughs> yes. Off. So, um, like I said, this is the most recent one I've written um, called Ghosts of the Past. And um, this title is pretty self-explanatory. There's, there's no behind-the-scenes story to that one. <laughs> but um, this is Ghosts of the Past. country artist right right yeah yeah I would say I and what's funny about that too is that I went against that for so long because when I was younger I, had, I mean I grew up in country music I've loved country music since I was little but I would say and this is just from my experience growing up you know early 2000s 2010 stuff like that the state of females in country music it was the very the stereotype of you had to do this certain type of country and you couldn't do anything else the boundaries weren't being pushed at the time and I didn't want to do what they were doing 
And you know, this is pre Spotify or when it, all that stuff was coming in. So there's a lot of changes happened even in my 22 years of life, you know, and just specifically the music business. So this door kind of opened to what this, this realm of like alternative country that's almost bringing the outlaw country back and the roots and the bluegrass and stuff like that. So I finally <laughs> was sitting with my professor one day. She said, Lexi, I don't know why you're so against it. And I explained that to her. She's like, well, that makes a lot of sense. But she said, you fit into that realm. She said, country music is a lot more than just one vein. I mean, there's so many different types of, of music and, and, you know, Americana or folk music, they all kind of come. I mean, a lot of the times now the genres are kind of running together, which is cool. And then there's sub genres, but I would say, yeah, I would, Americana, country, stuff like that. You said in that session that there was a song that came out of it. I believe the name was Heartstrings. How about sharing that with us next? All right. So this is Heartstrings. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. My Facebook is Alexis Jade, and then I also have a music page, which is just Alexis Jade Music. Um, and on Instagram, it's alexisjade.d. So on there, I'll post, um, you know, show dates, upcoming events, stuff like that, and just content, kind of see what I'm up to. Um, and I actually have a single um, that'll be on all platforms, um, and that's Return to Sender, which is the one I'll play in a little bit. Um, but yeah, as, as far as right now, I think there'll be some stuff on YouTube. I have a couple of things with different things, and obviously this will be on YouTube. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. I hope that you've enjoyed Alexis's music and that you will follow her on social media and maybe make an effort to see her live somewhere. We'll see you again in two weeks for the next Songwriter Spotlight. Alexis, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It was a real pleasure. I learned a lot, so I appreciate you being here. Tell me the story about Return to Cinder, and maybe play us out with that song. So this song was one of those that I had a moment in my life where I was just super frustrated. I was feeling sad and kind of heartbroken about a situation, and I sat down 
you like I said, sometimes come home and just sit down on my guitar and this song happened. It was within five minutes. And it was almost like journaling or, or like talking to a therapist, just letting it all out. And then as soon as I let, you know, play the last chord, sing the last word, set my guitar down, I was like, I'm over it. I'm good. So I went back, it wasn't until later, and I looked back at my phone again, I listened to it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I really like this song. I, if you know, I was gonna record anything, this is the one I feel like represents me the most as an artist. Um, so it's about unreciprocated love, which, you know, it's a very happy thing to be talking about. <laughs> but it's, it's a thing that I think a lot of people go through in many different ways, whether it's with your family, your friends, you know, like I said, significant other. Um, I think it's a very common topic. And because it's a common topic, I wanted to approach it in a little bit of a different way so the first thing that came to my mind is you know feeling like a letter which is the opening line of the song feeling like a letter on your kitchen table so like a a bill or you know those red light tickets that we just throw to the side you know you don't pay any attention to them um just kind of feeling disregarded like that like you get something and you don't even have the decency to open it so that's kind of the feeling of that being in a relationship and maybe the feelings aren't mutual or you're not you're you know putting in a lot not getting a lot back so <laughs> that's where the inspiration for this song came from and um but i think it has kind of a happy ending i think within that theme too there's the theme of realizing your worth and kind of doing something about it too but um this is return to sender
scratched out on 